Hi folks, last time uh, we did a video, I showed you mod-driven apps and integration between Dataverse and Exchange. Um, what we're doing this time is something similar, but using Canvas apps. And the reason you may want to do that is rather than using the standard out of the box integration, you may have your own specific requirements and that may also need to be enriched with additional features such as OneNote or whatever else. Although I won't be sharing the OneNote elements, I just want to focus on the integration and some of the routes available to you but also some of the issues that you may come across if you try to do it using the standard Dataverse um, integration. The result is ultimately still going to be a calendar view. Um, we want to get things into our Outlook calendar. And if I scroll over to the right here, you can see we've got some examples which we'll be running through momentarily. So jumping into um, Power Apps then. So what, what we can do, if I, if I run you through an example, I'm going to show you kind of what doesn't work first. And then we'll we'll evolve that. So here I have a calendar screen. Now, how did I get to this screen? If you go to new screens, fortunately, there is now an option to add just a calendar in. On previous videos, uh, we had to build all this out ourselves. By selecting that, you get this screen that's created for you. And the nice thing about this is I can select multiple calendars. I can jump between multiple days and I can see everything that's already booked in. You can't do this using appointments in Dataverse. It doesn't have a context as to what already exists in your Outlook calendar unless it was created within Dataverse. So you can imagine if you've got a load of meetings that other people have booked in and you want to schedule around that and you don't have the option um, in Dataverse to be able to see those meetings and therefore you may have conflicts. So again, one example of using Canvas app is it's going to give you some of that visibility as to actually when are people available and when they're not. Although if you were to create an appointment in Dataverse, it does pop up with a notification. Here in the Canvas app, it's more visual, so it gives you a bit more, a bit more detail. And what I've also done behind the scenes is I've created a really, really simple form, which is just pulling from um, my, my appointment table in, in Dataverse. And you'll see here, there's a, there's a kind of a load of extra fields on here, which you're not maybe familiar with in, in, in Dataverse. And I'll, we'll get into that a bit in a moment. And you'll also notice we've got a little green button up here. Well, we'll come back to that shortly. So here I can see my, I can see information on my calendar. If I click the plus icon, all this is, is a simple button that says, right, I want to create a new form. I want to navigate to the right page. So if I play that, that's going to take me through to my form. And here I can add some details. So my subject could be, um, we'll call this one YouTube video test. Start time, we'll set that to be, we'll set that to be today. And the end time. And we'll go with 7 a.m. To, to 8 a.m. All of these you can configure to default to certain times. It's just I haven't done that for this demo. The other thing you need to be wary of is this is draft. If you don't submit that through on the form, it's going to fail. So I'm going to set that to no. And the other element is this manual attendee. Um, one of the uh, fields on our records here, if I quickly jump into appointment, where you have required and optional these are what we call party lists they're not exposed via the the standard um kind of table references in canvas apps so if i'm coming in here and i'm looking for right you know let's select, select my name give that a second jump onto there i can't do that in the canvas app so we need to find a workaround and essentially what i've done is i've created a field on here which is just called manual attendee and when we submit a record there's a power automate flow that triggers in the background which i can walk you through in a bit of detail momentarily so I'm just going to pop into here. I'm going to search for my name and pop that in. And what I've also done is uh, I've got this created from Canvas app to set to yes. Again, I can set that to a, a default value if needs be. And the reason for that is if I'm going to make use of appointments outside of the Canvas app, I don't want to be triggering that flow every time because it's probably going to fail because it's missing data or trying to submit empty data and records. Um, so again, that, that's why that's in there. I can use that in my Power Automate. And in this status reason, um, what you might find is if you're troubleshooting potentially why appointments aren't uh, syncing through to Outlook, and a bit of a spoiler for later, um, you'll notice that when you're creating a record, you have this status in the top right of open. Here, if I set that to be busy, it will it'll update that status to be scheduled. So there's a, there's a number of uh, statuses you can bring in here. And with all of that, that's all configured. If I submit it, um, my submit is, is going to be a nice little button that takes me through to um, takes it through to Dataverse. 
You'll notice though that we've configured that. I think we configured it for the 31st. There's no dates in there. Even if I update my calendar, there's there's nothing that's come through. Right. So if I jump into my appointments now, I can just discard those changes. We can see that right. We've got YouTube video tests been created. We've got everything populated in there. But for whatever reason, when you submit an appointment via Canvas app or via Power Automate Flow, it's not going to go through and sync into Outlook. Problem number one, which we need to put essentially have a have a, a solution for, which which I'll go through in a moment. Um, the other thing we've got in here as well, I, I mentioned how this required field uh, doesn't get populated if we can't expose it. The way I've got around that is if I jump back into Power Apps, I'll jump into my solution here. And we should have some flows which I can walk through momentarily. Here we go, cloud flows. And we've got populate required attendee. If I jump into there and quickly edit it, what we'll see is essentially a flow which will trigger uh, when a new record is created in Dataverse, I get my appointments table. And then there'll be an update record that follows that. So here we have a record that's been created, it's been added to appointments. Um, here where I've got my filter rows, that's where I can configure that, that option to only select things that have come from the app. And update row, really simple. Essentially it's coming through and what I can do is I can select my table, which is gonna be users in this instance. And then the value here um, is gonna be submitted based on the manual attendee value that I've brought in. Here you can see we've got the activity part attribute. I can go in there and change it. So there's a number option and required attendees. So jumping back, in, back into the app then. So we, we, we know we can't sync through. Yes, we can create a record in Dataverse. And if that's all you're after, brilliant. You know, the, it, it, it's done. Um, but I'm not happy with that approach. So we're going to change it. So the other route we can take is actually by creating a record in Outlook and also creating a record in Dataverse at the same time. And the way we'd go about that is what we have here is I've created a essentially a page which allows me to create a new meeting and again all of this really set up if you go to new screen on the left hand side you can set up a meeting so a, a lot of the a lot of the hard work in terms of formatting everything else is, is made a lot easier for us and what I can do here is I can go through and populate my invite I can set up a schedule and this will also check for available slots in the diary as well so again I've not had to write any any code at this point it's doing doing it all for me However, on my submit button, if I quickly drop that down, there's a whole load of information in here. Really brief run through. Essentially, this bit up here is what's submitting it to Outlook. This bit down here is what's going to reset all the fields. So if, if you've ever used things like the, the reset function, um, that will then set up that field back to its default value. Um, essentially, it's doing that so we can then write extra bits and pieces, extra records in later on without having to rewrite the form. Um, here is the statement that I've created. So here we're going to patch into appointments. That's our table in uh, Dynamics or in, in Dataverse. We're going to set the default values. So that way anything which um, needs to be submitted that we don't really want to be you know, writing code in to get that, that updated from our side of that, that'll handle that. Essentially, it's going to create a new record for us as well. And here we can pass the information. So where we have the subject, we can pull that from the form is draft remember we have to submit that through and send it through as false and here we have a start and end time and things like duration are automatically calculated so what i can do at this point is if i jump back into my calendar and here's where the, the little green button pops into it if i select that green button it's going to take me through to this page i'm going to search for my name the subject we'll call this one example two youtube Add a bit of a message and then we do some other options down here if you want to play around with on the schedule here if i was to select let's say we'll go with the 31st you can see that i've not not set myself available at that time so let's go with we'll go with the second and we're going to book a two or two hour slot so we'll go through and have a look at what's in the diary i'll select 10 a.m and when I click send invite, that's going to go through, create the records in the appointment table and also push it into Outlook. You'll notice, however, that right, the, the table, the calendar is not updated. It's because it updates when you update the, 
the, the drop down here, you can see that if I now go to the second, we have example for YouTube, and now, now, now that's come through. If I jump back onto my calendar, we'll give that a second, and I might just need to give it a very quick refresh. There we go. So on Tuesday the, the second, we now have the, the appointment that's come through. Better still, if I jump into my appointments, we can see that it's come through on here as well. So again, that's that's one one mechanism of of, of going through and essentially having the appearance that the two are integrated. Really, what we're doing is we're making use of a canvas app to hook into multiple systems at once to actually log those 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 records. That way, if we want to invite multiple people to it, if we want to see multiple calendars, we want to have the ability to look at available slots. That's what the canvas app is doing. And again, it's doing that instead of what's available via Dataverse and the model driven app. Now there is another way of doing this um, and it doesn't require a canvas app at all. In Outlook, if you were to create a, an appointment, you do have the option of going through and um, essentially integrating with, with, with Dynamics or with, with Dataverse. Um, here we've got Copilot for sales, although I don't have it configured at the moment, you can go through, build your appointment into here. You'll have the similar ability to schedule and uh, whatever else. Um, if you do have the, the Copilot for sales element in there, what you can do is if with the synchronization, if you don't do service size sync and you use um, the Outlook app um, within within Dataverse, you can actually sync the, the items from here back into the appointments table. The only downside with that is, and this is what I was talking about earlier, in my Power app, if let's say I wanted to, we'll quickly jump onto a base record here. If we wanted to bring in additional capabilities, so you have a whole load of stuff there. We've got things like that like media and, and whatever else. And again, on the left hand side here, if I wanted to bring in you know, any other number of connectors, we can't do that via the Outlook app. And again, there's other licensing requirements there as well. So I think with your Canvas app solution, that's going to allow you to get your calendars up and running, integrate with them. Also, if you want to extend that to then hook onto Dataverse, you can definitely achieve that. And again, if you go down the route of dynamics later on, again, you, you may not need this, but ultimately you'll be paying a high price for that. So this is a, sort of a nice middle ground. Um, I hope you enjoy that. So re re really nice and you know rather simple. I've not really had to fight any code, maybe a couple of buttons. Um, a lot of it is using out-of-the-box templates. But again, another method of being able to integrate with calendars using the Power Platform.